Morning, everybody. Morning. Welcome to First Gen and Methodist. Please stand and sing with me. We're going to do How Great Is Our God. Father, we come here to worship you this morning. Your name is above all names. You are worthy to be praised. We thank you for entering into this room here, Father. We ask that you continue to touch our lives. Amen.
letter is one day in your courts bound elsewhere. Let's all pray together. Lord God, giver of every good and perfect gift, we thank you for your faithful provision for our lives. Please accept these, our tithes and offerings, as a token of our humble gratitude and eternal love. May your will always be done here on earth, just as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray.
may be seated. Let's quiet ourselves as we go to God in prayer this morning. Oh God, we are your children. We are people who you call your own. It's just hard to imagine what it is we could have possibly done to deserve such an honor. But out of love, you came and redeemed us to you. And for that, we're forever grateful. We're still a people very much in need of prayer. As we come today, Lord, lifting up Mary Tillman. Mary lives over in Methodist Towers. They found her unconscious on her floor this past week. She's over in uh, Hammond in the ICU, suffering from an infection and also from liver failure. Continue lifting up Dan Johnson. I was over and saw him this week. Uh, he's continuing to heal, hoping to be fitted with a prosthetic soon. We pray for Loretta Nosco. She was admitted last night uh, to Hammett with high blood pressure. We uh, also come today uh, thinking of those people in West Texas, families of those five who are dead, the 21 injured, including the police officers. And then we come with a joy, Lord. Tom Bayless has a new grandchild, Madison Grace. Born on uh, Friday, seven pounds, 11 ounces. Amelia is doing well. Hopefully, maybe they'll be able to come home today. And as we do each week, Lord, we pray for some of the children in our neighborhood. So we pray for Caitlin, for Aubrey, and for Samantha. Oh God, we are who you say we are. And we are your children, your sons and your daughters. And all we can say is amen. First of all, if you'd be so good as to take the friendship pads found in the center of your table or, or at the end of your row, uh, clipped inside the fr uh, front cover, you'll find a little card. You'll take a moment. You can fill that out. Tell us a little bit about you. You can leave it there in the, in the pad. There's also a brochure in the front cover, which will tell you a little bit about us. You're free to take one of those. We ask everyone to record their presence with us as well. So we do have a few announcements today. Actually, more than a few, we can tell we're coming into fall. I think this is, uh, we set another record for a number of announcements. Uh, first of all, back at the beginning of the week, our youth group got together with the youth group from up in New York. We had a total of 28 kids and nine adults. Uh, we got out there at Susan's place. As you can see, Susan has this really nice pond in her backyard. Uh, so the kids went paddle boating, uh, kayaking, and swimming, and all kinds of other stuff. Of course, we had a picnic, too. It was a great time. Uh, first Sunday lunch is today, because this is the uh, first Sunday in September, immediately after the second service. It's uh, downstairs in Fellowship Hall over there. Everyone's uh, welcome to join us. Um, last week, uh, we cooked and served Sunday supper over at Covenant and served 185. Tonight, we are actually hosting it over here. We're not cooking and serving this time, but that's what my schedule said. Oh, I'm a month off, two months off, three months off. This is what's on my calendar. All right, skip that one. Skip that one. I don't know. I, I go by the calendar. Okay. Uh, Ride for the Refuge water stop is tomorrow. Of course, Ride for the Refuge is tomorrow. They, you can still sign up. You can show up and sign up as a, a runner, I mean, as a rider, uh, actually, in the morning. Uh, we have all of the items that we need, uh, food items and, and water and whatnot we need for this. So a bunch of us are heading out there 8 o'clock tomorrow morning to the Meadows Golf Course. Uh, and last I heard there was 70 riders signed up so far. Something like that. Close enough. Close enough. Okay. Um, again, just a reminder, our new uh, office manager is uh, Wendy Faticia. Uh, Wendy's been here for a couple of weeks. Uh, Melody's last day here was Thursday. Uh, she is planning on being at the later service today. We'll be down and joining us for lunch. And of course, they move at the end of this coming week uh, down to Cranberry Township. And of course, Melody is continuing as our financial administrator. She'll just be doing it remotely via computer. Um, there is a new Wednesday morning book study. It's going to be starting um, 
this Wednesday, September 4th, uh, 10 a.m. down in the Wesley Room. Uh, they're studying the book, um, Believe, Living the Story of the Bible to Become Like Jesus by Randy Frazee. And Susan's uh, facilitating that, so if you have questions, you can talk with her. Um, I know Howard is uh, wanting us all to participate again in the crop walk that's coming up on September 15th. Uh, he's trying to form a team from our church, and uh, the goal that he has set is that this team from our church will try to raise uh, $1,000 from other people. So again, that's coming up really quick here, September 15th. Uh, we have a Haas's Steakhouse a fundraising dinner coming up on Tuesday, September 24th. The way it works is you can eat any time during that day as long as you take the, the little ticket with you. But we also have uh, the side room, a portion of the side room reserved between 5 and 7 p.m. for those of us who want to go and be able to eat together. So again, that's coming up on September 24th. We're doing this to benefit camperships. We're starting to raise money uh, for next year. Uh, there will be a church membership opportunity a month from today, so it'll be a month from, from now, so it'll be Sunday, October 6th. Uh, it'll be the opportunities at both services. If you do uh, feel God calling you to join us in our mission to share our passion for Jesus Christ with Erie's Next Generations, all you got to do is see me. Now we're doing an orientation after the second service, the Sunday before, so that's September 29th. Um, it takes about an hour and a half, but that includes us having lunch together, too. So, Our, our Rise Against Hunger Packing Party is coming up in October. Um, again, you sign up online at the Rise Against Hunger uh, slash EFUMC for Erie First United Methodist Church. Um, now, in addition to the packing time, there's also a, a setup time and a teardown time. Now, we're doing good at getting people to sign up for packing, but we can still use more people for setup and teardown. Now, as you know, this is the Labor Day weekend, so of course the church office will be closed tomorrow. And I found a little video about Labor Day, so let's watch this. We all work, and we work hard. Long hours, short breaks, and not near enough pay. We give our passion, our expertise, our lives to the very jobs we work every day. We all have hopes and dreams, dreams of accomplishment, investment, and definitely retirement. But let's not lose track of one thing. This Labor Day, remember that it's not our work that defines us, but how we work, why we work, and for whom we work. Whatever you do, work at it with all of your heart as working for the Lord. Happy Labor Day. It looks like it's just Olivia me today. Hi, Olivia. By the way, Olivia has her locker figured out at school. It only took her a couple of times. She, she learned you have to reset it in between. So she's got that figured out. Have a seat, have a seat. All right, if we look up at the screen, what are those guys doing? Um, holding their trophies. They're holding their trophies, okay? So we have a first, second, and third place finisher. Okay, now, if you ran in a race, okay, but you came in like 10th, what would happen if you went up and you stood on the, the, the first place thing? What would, what would happen? Um, you think somebody would come and tell you, you're not supposed to be there, <laughs> okay? And they'd go, get down off there, all right? So it wouldn't be a good idea to go and get up there if, if, if you weren't supposed to be there, right? All right, so if we go ahead by one, what we have is, is uh, there was a guy who threw a banquet, okay? And he's a really important guy, invited all kinds of people, but what you do is, you know, he invited lots of guests, and even though you think you're really important, you should go up and sit beside him. You know what the smartest thing to do is? Not to do that, all right? So if we read from our Bible lesson, all the big people, help me read this, let's read this together. Take the lowest place at the foot of the table. Then when your host sees you, he will come and say, friend, we have a better place for you. Then you will be honored in front of all of the other guests. All right, so what you do is just go sit somewhere in the back. But then if, if the host really wants you up there, they'll call you up, okay? That's how you get honored. Don't just go up and take it. 
All right? So if we go ahead by one more, what if you, f you ended in third place? Now remember that little podium I had at the beginning? Mm -hmm. All right? So if you ended in third place, you go stand on the third place one. And this actually happened not too long ago. If you go ahead by one more. Okay, see, so there's the first place guy and, and the second place guy and the third place guy. And what's the first place guy doing? He's inviting them all to come up with him. So go by one more. See, so they all got honored, all right? But they got honored by somebody else doing it, not by them doing it themselves. All right, we do have papers for you today. This one's for you. You'll see Harrison at some point, so you can give him that one. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for teaching us not to seek the place of honor, but to wait for it, because it's you who honors us, not us who honors ourselves. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, Libby. By the way, she is becoming an expert live stream operator back there. She knows how to switch, uh, switch video things and everything. Okay, so um, again, we're in the Gospel of Luke. This week we've made it to chapter 14. I'm going to be reading uh, from Luke 14, the first verse, then jumping on over with verses 7 through 14. Uh, as usual, the words are up on the screen, and I invite you all to listen to God's word. On one occasion, was Jesus was going to the house of the leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guest chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit at the place of honor, in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they invite, invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. And you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be pay, repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let's pray. Oh God, our God, allow us to hear your voice. Fill us with your holy word today. Amen. Okay, if you look up on the screen, this is one of those pictures, one more. There we go. This is one of those pictures that kind of requires you to do a double take. Are you seeing what it is you think you're seeing? Is that girl actually riding that horse backwards? Now, here's another view. And sure enough, you can see she's riding the horse backwards. Pretty cute trick, huh? By the way, this is a video clip of a young woman. Okay, not only is she riding her horse backwards, she's actually doing it while the horse is cantering. Looks kind of dangerous, doesn't it? Uh, but I, by the way, I understand she does that all the time. Oh, and how about one of those backwards days at school? You know, that's those days when the kids wear their clothes backwards. Now everybody knows this looks really silly, but I can also tell you the kids really love it. Just ask any elementary school teacher, and they'll tell you backwards days are always a really big hit. Kids love wearing their shirts and their pants and their skirts backwards. And how's this for really super cool? Okay, this little boy is wearing his shoes, probably actually his dad's shoes, backwards too. Backwards may look silly, but it's way more fun. Now, I doubt you've ever thought about this, but Jesus is a really big fan of backwards too. 
Jesus takes our normal way of thinking and turns it all around. You know, there are those famous statements he had, you know, the ones that go, you have heard that it was said. No, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist the evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other cheek also. Or how about this one? You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Yes, Jesus likes backwards. Yep, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Everything is backwards. Most of us just don't get backwards. Now, we'd farther, far rather be in the box seats at the ball game than sitting in the bleachers way up there in peanut heaven. Or we would far rather dine at the country club than dumpster dive out behind the local fast food joint. We'd far rather be driving a Lexus LS than a Ford Focus. We want the status, we want the comfort, we want the prestige. That is the American dream, isn't it? The dream of becoming somebody in life. Now, this all reminds me of the theme song uh, of the late 70s, early 80s sitcom, The Jeffersons. George and Louise Jefferson, who were just poor, working class black folk. Uh, by the way, they were the neighbors of uh, Archie and Edith Bunker. I don't think too many people remember that part. When George uses some money from an insurance settlement to open a dry cleaners that expands into a chain, and what do you know? Well, the next thing, we're moving on up to the east side, to a deluxe apartment in the sky. Moving on up to the east side. We finally got a piece of the pie. We like upwards mobility. We like all of those rags to riches stories. We like rubbing elbows with people from the upper crust. It's human nature to want to be somebody. Somebody better than all of those other nobodies. Somebody who has all the best. Somebody who gets to go to all those A-list parties. In America, pretty much everyone has hopes of making it big one day and becoming a millionaire, or nowadays with inflation, a multimillionaire. After all, that is the American dream, isn't it? Now, it's not that that's all bad, because it isn't. But the danger here is when we start letting it go to our heads. The danger is if we start to think that we're really better than others. If we start thinking, you know, we're God's gift to humanity. That's when we need to remember the Apostle Paul's very sage advice. This was in his letter to the Romans. I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of the faith God has assigned. No matter who you are or what you've become, you still have to put your pants on one leg at a time, just like everybody else. Now, I remember one day, this was back in the early 1990s, I was returning home from a business trip. I, I think we'd gone up into New York. I was coming back when the rental car I was driving broke down. It broke down just like about a half a mile before the exit in Indiana where I lived. I had just managed to crawl out of the car. I had the hood up. Okay, when another car stopped and they asked if I needed any help. Now, as I said, I wasn't really that far from the exit, and I lived only right off the exit. I could have walked home, but this is a really busy highway that probably wasn't really safe. So I said, sure, could you give me a lift up to the next exit? Well, the rear door of the car popped open. I crawled in, and off we went. Now, I have to tell you, this car really wasn't much to look at. As a matter of fact, you'd probably describe it as a junker. And inside, in the front seats, were a husband and wife, and in the back seat were two little kids, and what appeared to be every earthly possession that they had. So I asked the husband where they were going. He explained, you know, I've lost my job, but we're moving to a friend's in Pittsburgh so I can look for work. Now, I have to tell you, I immediately recognized the irony of this situation. Here I am, at that point, I'm this big-time business executive. 
and I'm receiving charity from a poor family down on their luck. By the way, they didn't just give me a ride to the exit, they actually kept going and dropped me off at my front door. In that moment, my world was working backwards. Yes, most of us just don't get backwards. So Jesus gives us instruction in how to be humble. Jesus tutors us in the backwards realities of God's kingdom. Now, in God's kingdom, the poor are rich. In God's kingdom, the weak are powerful. In God's kingdom, the, the humble are honored, while the proud are laid low. Now, none of those statements are an exact quote from the Bible. But if you're a student of the Gospels, you know that that is indeed what Jesus has said. Jesus has declared the good news of God's kingdom, and that good news is in many, <clears throat> in many ways backwards from the ways that we're used to things being here. Here people die, there people don't. Here people get sick and they suffer for years. There, there's no pain. Here, the rich people eat the finest of fare at the head of the table. Well, what do the poor people do? They eat the scraps out in the alley out back. There, there's a place for everyone at the Lord's table. Wait, are you catching on to what it is that I actually mean when I say backwards? You know, God's ways are higher than our ways and God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We're using the vocabulary, the way I'm using it in this message today, God's ways are backwards of our ways. Our Bible lesson today, from the Gospel of Luke, is set on the Sabbath. It's in the afternoon, a very eloquent banquet thrown by a really, uh, wealthy, prominent Pharisee. Now, I'm sure everybody who was anybody in Jerusalem was invited. The guest list would have read like a who's who of first century Jewish society. And like with any such social event, you have uh, to invite a person, or a parson or two, okay, a clergy person or two, uh, so you at least have somebody who'll be able to do an invocation and a benediction. But how else can you possibly explain why it is that Jesus got invited? Uh, everybody knows Jesus never had any money, but it was Judas who kept the money bag for the disciples. And Jesus, you know, he never had a big fancy house. You know, how's it go? And foxes have their dens and birds have their nest, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. So, so the only reason I can figure that they invited Jesus was to appease their pious sensibilities and have somebody to do the invocation. This brings us to verse 7 uh, at the first part of our Bible lesson today. Jesus arrives at the banquet. He looks around to see where everybody else is sitting. Now Jesus knows that in this crowd he's just a nobody. So he amuses himself by watching the way that all of the other people who think that there are somebodies are vying for the seats that are closest to the host. Now, seeing a teaching moment, Jesus goes into rabbi mode, and he, he tells the guest a parable. Now, remember, when Jesus tells a parable, he's telling a story about a common everyday event. In this case, the seating arrangements at a banquet, and he tells that story to teach, teach people about what things are like in God's kingdom. So Jesus' advice is simple. Don't try to be important. Just sit in the back or off in the wing somewhere. And then when the host sees you, he'll ask you to honor him by coming and sitting with him at his table. So don't seek honor for yourself. Let others have the honor of honoring you. Now I can remember back when I was in business, uh, I used to receive these really fancy invitations from organizations wanting to include me in their who's who book that they were publishing. You know, who's who in American engineering? Who's who in the energy business? Who's who among prominent Carnegie Mellon graduates? But of course, 
They always wanted me to pay them hundreds or even thousands of dollars to get my name in their book. That's not an honor. That's nothing more than self-aggrandizing vanity. Don't honor yourself. Let others have the honor of honoring you. That's why I titled today's message, Honor Backwards. As the Bible says, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So Jesus wisely gives us instruction in how to be humble. And Jesus reminds us that in God's kingdom, even nobodies are somebodies. That's a profoundly backward way in God's kingdom that we just can't seem to grasp. We really don't treat nobodies very well. We tell them not to loiter on our streets. We tell them not to panhandle on our doorsteps. We tell them not to trespass on our property. We tell them not to rummage through our garbage. We tell them not to camp out in our parks. We tell them to get out of town and go somewhere else, anywhere but here. But I'm not exaggerating. I've watched this happen time and time again everywhere that I've lived, and I've lived quite a few places. There's something Jesus told his disciples that I'm sure most of you have heard many times before. Jesus says this at the tail end of his discourse, the one where he talks about the sheep and the goats. This is in Matthew 25. Jesus says, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it for one of the least of these, you did not do it for me. Jesus was thirsty, but we didn't give him anything to drink. Jesus was hungry, but we didn't give him anything to eat. Jesus was a stranger, but we didn't invite him in. Jesus needed clothes, but we didn't clothe him. Jesus was sick, but we didn't look after him. And of course, our protest is the same protest that the disciples had 2,000 years ago. Lord, when did we not do these things for you? Once when I was a pastor down in Union City, I can remember one Sunday, a young homeless man came in uh, to worship with us. By the way, I don't think anybody actually knew he was homeless. In fact, I noticed that a few people actually recognized him from when he was younger, and they went over and spoke with him. But just a few weeks later, that young man was sitting in the Erie County Jail. Now, on the in-between time, I had spoken with him a number of times. I, I can remember, I gave him a ride once. I, I, I lent him a few dollars. Uh, I, I helped him with some personal items. Uh, then, he started to go door to door, asking if he could earn a little money by doing odd jobs for anyone. Now, I know he was sincere. You know, he really was willing to work for what it was he needed. But because he was dirty and unkept, uh, people were afraid of him. Word began to spread quickly. I actually saw a post about him on Facebook. You know, when he would knock on people's doors, they would hide inside and pretend they weren't home. Finally, somebody decided to dial 911 and demand that the police do something. They did. They took him off to jail for being a public nuisance. Perhaps the town was safer, but I couldn't stop hearing Jesus' warning echoing around in my head. What you have done for the least of these, what you have not done for the least of these, you have not done for me. If Jesus knocked on your door and asked, you know, can I earn a little money by doing some odd jobs for you, what would you do? Would you let him cut your grass? Would you let him read your flower bed? Um, would you let him paint the porch? Or would you hand him a few bucks? Well, only you know what you would do. But I hope that we wouldn't call the police and lock him away. In the last part of our Bible lesson today, Jesus said, but when you give in banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. Now, there's nothing for any of us in that today. But the day of repayment will yet come. 
That's the day when we all get to see Jesus face to face. And on that day, we'll see what Jesus has been telling us all along. In God's kingdom, even nobodies are somebody. Backwards horseback riding, wearing your clothes backwards to school, they may all look silly, but it's way more fun. And Jesus is a big fan of backwards too. The last shall be first and the first shall be last. Yes, most of us just don't get backwards. Like the Jeffersons, we all want to move on up in life. And of course the danger is if we start letting our newfound success go to our heads. So Jesus wisely gives us instruction in how to be humble. Jesus tutors us in the backwards realities of God's kingdom. Don't honor yourself. Let others have the honor of honoring you. And Jesus does remind us that in God's kingdom, even nobodies are somebody. In God's kingdom, everyone is someone, even if they've been locked away for being a public nuisance. That's all part of the backwards ways of God's kingdom. Let's direct our glory heavenward and our honor backwards. Let's pray. O oh God, our God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to instruct us in the backward ways of your kingdom. Help us to make our ways here in heaven just like your way, our ways here on earth just like your ways there in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, as we come to the Lord's table, I remind you that here in the United Methodist Church, you don't have to be a member of this church to be welcomed at Christ's table. What you do have to do is you have to earnestly repent of your sins. You have to love for God and your neighbor in your heart, and you have to desire to walk in the ways of Jesus. If that describes you, you're welcome at the Lord's table today. So let's all join together as we confess our sins. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to us, your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Our Lord, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. After he broke that bread, he gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Eat this and remember me. And after they'd eaten, in like manner, he took the cup, Again, when he'd given thanks, he said, take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it and remember me. And so it is in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, that we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us. 
as we proclaim the mystery of faith together. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the whole world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Olivia, are you going to help me again? Olivia is going to come help. So again, what we will do is we'll work our way around the room like this. I will break off a piece of bread and give it to you. You then dip it into the cup, which Olivia will be holding. And then uh, you can partake of this sacrament to the comfort of your souls. Please come. the scriptures that after the meal they sang a song and went out so let's stand and sing
you still trying to move on up? Are you still trying to be better than the people next door? Then you need to start living in the backwards ways of God's kingdom. Go forth, honoring yourself and others backwards. God's people said,